Hello everyone, and welcome to episode 29 of the What The Sheep podcast, Oof. our very first live stream on YouTube. I, I, I'm i not going to lie, I'm kind of nervous, I don't know why. We've been doing this for tw- <laughs> 28 episodes before this, and all of a sudden now I'm nervous about doing a live stream on YouTube. Anyways, um... Yeah. Okay. Where, where where am I? Where am I? I'm losing my mind already. Okay. You good. So we are right, we are good. going to be discussing and breaking down and just generally gushing about Critical Role Campaign Two, Episode One Hundred and Nineteen. I do already see some some new faces, some fami- familiar faces from the, the Twitch live stream. So welcome, welcome everyone. This is this is kind of exciting. I'm actually really excited about this. Um, but before <laughs> we dive into uh, this week's episode of Critical Role, I'm going to pass it over to Alana, who has a uh, really cool announcement. Yeah, so just a really quick announcement uh, before we start the discussion about Hit Dice Heroes. So if you're a fan of our show, Hit Dice Heroes, it is, or if you're not a fan, if you're new to the idea of Hit Dice Heroes, it is our fortnightly D&D stream that we do set in the World Wild Mount, um, and we've been doing it for couple of couple of months now um but we have a very cool announcement that uh next weekend we're going to be teaming up level up dice to present a wonderful holiday themed one shot on their twitch channel uh so it's really exciting to team up with them they're a super cool one dice provider but also a really cool uh, uh, ttrpg twitch community on their twitch channel which is level up ttv uh so it's really cool to be able to work with them on this it's a really fun one shot that i created a year ago and have played multiple times and it's really fun i think i say it's really fun because i i wrote it but uh yeah it's really cool i uh, hope you guys can check it out we're going to be posting a bunch of stuff on our socials about it and check out level up dice as well to see them post about it uh but yeah it's called the fright before festivus which is, uh, I'm just really excited. I'm, it. I'm really excited. Cool to be with them. And, um, yeah, the, the characters are really fun so far, <laughs> at least of what I've seen. Um, but yeah, super excited. It's going to be streaming, uh, our regular time for hit dice heroes. Uh, but yeah, just keep an eye on our socials. It's hit dice heroes and level up dice to see when that's coming out. No episode of hit dice heroes tomorrow though, just because we're getting yes. for the one shot. Uh, but yeah, it'd be really cool if you guys could tune in. Yes, yes, and especially tune in for for some of the uh, the characters that are that are already being concocted. I'm super excited. Hello, Danny G. Welcome. Hello, Good. hello back. Hello. It's gonna be it's gonna be great. Yeah, you 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 described your character just like you just gave the basic description. I was like, yep, perfect. Yep. I love it. Let's go. <laughs> yeah. I'm so excited. It's gonna be a great gonna time. So uh, yes, definitely be sure to go there. And again, um, it's at Hit Dice Heroes on Twitter where we will be posting like mm-hmm. different announcements and all that stuff. So yes, be sure to check it out. We're all really excited for that. Um, but anyways, I guess, I guess with all that being said, we can, we can dive right into this, uh, yes. this episode starting off with that bonkers, uh, combat that we had very equal parts, deadly, um, equal parts, absolutely hilarious and creative. I think Yeah, it was really 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 cool it was another one of those awesome kind of combats where i think they went in so so nervous they mm-hmm. once again pretty much dominated it yep. um there was like some clo- pretty close calls Bo was oh, really yeah. close there for a while but they did a really good job of handling it i guess um, yeah but yeah terrifying yeah it was absolutely terrifying thinking about um how the party was nervous and stuff but they still like crushed it it kind of reminds me of their battle with that like legendary t-rex back in rumble cusp but we were Mm. like oh my gosh this thing is like an ancient like t-rex that's gonna wreck their butts but then you know they (laughs) they tore it up um but at least at least this baby put up a bit of a fight um yeah the uh it's so strange referring to it as a baby I know, That's and that was, like. exactly, and that was, that was one of, like, the funny running gags of that combat was, like, what if it's just, like, looking for a mama? Like, what if it's just lonely? Like, what if it just needs, like, yeah. a parental Laura figure? Laura looked legitimately upset I know. for a while there. Like, I know. it's reaching out for a hug. I know. <laughs> oh, man. With its dozens yeah. of arms. No. no thanks. Screw that thing. It was Mm-mm. spooky. <laughs> yeah. Aeor is messed up. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, and I'm guessing, 
I'm guessing this monster was a homebrew monster. I'm guessing this monster isn't in the yeah. wild mount uh, guide. No. Okay. No. The skipping ahead because that's mm. what we do here. Um, <laughs> the other two are meant in the wild mount guide. They've got. They are. They've got stat blocks. Oh. Yeah. That's so creepy. So this is the subject, the thing that didn't really have a name. Um, oh, okay. But yeah, but the other two definitely have some cool stuff about them. <laughs> mm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, and a quick, uh, uh, a quick yeah, uh, sidebar no. though, um, for you uh, new yeah. viewers um, from YouTube, uh, Lin two one six in the chat is the Lin that we always refer to back in our our old live stream. Yes. So uh, be sure to give her a heart and a, a thank you for all of her, for all of her knowledge that she gives yeah. us. Lin um, knows literally everything. So calling her out on that one. She yeah. knows everything about yeah. Critical Role. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yes. Yeah. <laughs> uh, but, um, but anyways, yeah, we, <laughs> we got um, yeah, like incredible, incredible kind of combat because they were mm -hmm. they were spread out, they were planned, ready oh, yeah. to go, and then it was just like they lost their two big hitters to the yeah. uh, to the eye stall. Mm -hmm. Um, I like to see that Matt is coming up with more creatures that are capable of stunning the party. I think he's got yeah. so sick of like stunning strike. <laughs> like, well, now you're stunned. oh, you're immune. Deal with it. <laughs> yep. <laughs> Yeah. Um, no, it's really cool. Really cool. And then, what else happened early on? We got Nat uh, twenty level six infliction. Yeah, yeah. I wrote that down. I was like, I was like, I wrote big gesture yes. damage. That's what I wrote down. <laughs> that was. Yeah. I mean, it's a it's it's a low level spell, but when you pump that up, oof, that gets deadly. Yeah. And when it hits. <laughs> yeah, and when it hits, yeah. I think this is maybe, like, what, only, like, the second time it's probably hit the whole campaign? Probably I, something I like that. It, I think, yeah. <laughs> something like that, yeah. yeah. No, this is the first, surely <laughs> not. Um, yeah. No, it's so cool. It's so cool when it does it. And the fact that she can do it through her duplicate is extra exciting. Um, yeah. She doesn't need to be anywhere near the thing. Uh, and then, yeah, Jet Vulcans put in chat the uh, the wild magic surge. They called came from oh, that. Oh, yeah. Was that has that been discussed, or did I miss that? Was that a thing with, like... Because they all seem to know that a magic wild surge was going to be rolled. Was that for, like, because it was a nat 20, or...? That's a good was, question, because I don't just, think it... Because had already cast a spell, right? Mm -hmm. So maybe it is only on natural 20s. Hmm. That, that, which is cool. Yeah, which is cool. Um, but... I was worried that it was gonna be like like an every every single spell type deal, but I feel like that would probably get yeah. a little too chaotic if that were the case. Kind of, uh, what were they in the uh, in Halas's, in the folding halls? The the little uh, spell mites attack you based on the spell level. Oh you yeah, yeah. So I was thinking something like that, like you'd mm. have some kind of um, effect. But wild magic is pretty cool. <laughs> yeah. And totally jester with the butterflies i know so perfect because what, what did she really so remember? much worse <laughs> is 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 matt using like the uh the wild magic table like for sorcerers so. it seems like it let me have a quick looky but yeah she got a 63 so mm -hmm. like i know the butterflies is on there isn't one um, of them like you drop like a meteor on your location or something like that oh or you or you cast like a like a seventh level fireball up. right next to you some of them are super messed up. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Maybe not the exact same one, but it's... Yeah, because 63 in the player's handbook is you cast fog, fog clouds centered on yourself, which is like, uh, oh, cool. Okay. <laughs> you suddenly just completely... Yeah, he might have a, an adjusted one. An adjusted one, yeah. Yeah. That's yeah. cool. Um, But no, it was really cool. And yeah, it did tons of damage. They mess mm -hmm. this baby up. They, I know, they, so much necrosis and drugs in this baby. <laughs> I loved, I loved this the suit. That was so good. Oh my god! Of, of Such course, a good move. of Such course, a waste of suit. <laughs> I know. Like e e even oh Bo afterwards, god. she she was like regretting using it. She's like, I lost some good shit right there. Yeah. But, I'll get some more drugs. Yeah, yeah, that whole drug conversation. But it's funny, it's like, yeah. she was like, she would rather save the suit than just let me die, save the suit, just take let this. Me die. Yeah. Pick me up later, I'll get, I can, I want to save the suit. Yeah. yeah. Um, it's like, the, it's like this, no, this is probably cool. only like a, like a Midwesterner 
meme type thing, but there's there's like Midwestern memes yeah. where like where like Midwestern dads will do anything to save their can of beer. Like if they're like drowning underwater, they'll just like raise the can of beer oh, above, just like run. save the beer, save it, let me die. Yeah. <laughs> just the hand coming out of the baby's yep. mouth with a bag of sued. <laughs> yep. Yeah. Um, yeah, that that's really cool. Um, and Matt did really, Matt was like really good with how he. Uh, because that's, like, that's a DM nightmare for me of, like, my player saying, I'm using this item in a way it wasn't intended, and going, like, oh, mm-hmm. God, what's happened? Like, I don't know. Yeah. Um, but I think the way he he made it out, like, 2D4 could have been really good. Like, eight, Oh, yeah. Eight rounds, like, potentially. Eight rounds. <sighs> clearly had some kind of damage thr- threshold that would wake yeah. it up, and then, I mean, you get, you get a paladin critting on it, that's going to do it. Oh, yeah. <laughs> um, yeah. Yeah. Uh, but then Danny G brings up the uh, that whole bag of sued was for Trent. That was an interesting. I wonder if Bo is serious about how she was saving that sued to like incapacitate a uh, overdose Trent. Yeah, I wonder if she was serious oh, yeah. about that or how she would even like go about doing something like that. Hmm. Man. Now I yeah, now I kind of uh, wish was, um... they had saved the sued. <laughs> yeah. Um. Uh, someone's po- yeah, Lynn's pointing it out. It's from the Overcrow Apothecary, so they could always go back uh... and get some more. Um... <laughs> yeah, I'm sure. Uh, I'm sure Morrow would be would be happy to see to see the gang again. So much. Oh my God, <laughs> so good. Yeah, I love all of Matt's goblins. <laughs> They're amazing. Um, yeah, because uh, Veth got Veth got swallowed as well, didn't she? She did in this one. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, you're I'm... almost trying to, well, essentially trying to help Bo out. She pretty much put her in the position to be swallowed, um, which is, Matt was a lot kinder than I would be, because I think she was already in the mouth, but he still made the grapple check. I'm like, ah, oh, you get swallowed. You're in yeah. the mouth. Yeah, that's yeah. pretty much how that goes. No, no. And I think, yeah, she was probably not doing as great, too, because they were, they were talking to Sam, like, saying, how are you? He's like, I'm fine. But they're like, no, he's not. Look at that face. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. So I'm thinking, yeah, Beth might have been pretty low as well. Probably, I don't. I don't like to look because do they still have like the D and D Beyond overlay where you can like? No. no. Oh, okay. Oh, that's that right. Cause it's not live. Because it's not live. Okay. That's right. That's mm. right. Mm. Um, but I think yeah, one I of my yeah one of my favorite things that Travis kept doing this episode. He did it a couple times. Was whenever like. <laughs> He's done this in the past too, but whenever Sam is like trying to figure out what to do on his turn, Travis is always like saying like in his best not voice, like fluffer nutter like trying to coax yes. Sam into do it using the fluffer nutter. <laughs> yeah. Oh my god. And, it just gives me a chuckle every time. I have that. Yeah. Yeah, and Sam straight up said, I have that, don't think I'm not thinking about it. <laughs> oh man. Yeah. No I think they handled it really well. They were really good with Obviously, it was incapacitated for a full round, at least to let Travis get a free turn on it mm-hmm. um, with a crit or a crit. Yeah. So, yeah. And then just the blight was really upsetting. <laughs> I don't know mm. why. Mm-hmm. It was really good, um, but violent. <laughs> yeah. Like for Cad. Um, yep. I hope Cad's okay. <laughs> yeah, he seems really he- off this episode especially when they got to the arboretum yeah. which will which we'll touch yeah. on because i have a whole thing whole thing about that mm. that i'm worried about um yeah but uh, they all survived they all survived i, I was thinking uh Kirley and i were like i feel like someone's maybe not gonna die but like go down at the very least and mm. maybe die we were kind of like hoping like our angsty yeah. sides were like pushing through and we were like ooh, i kind of like hope someone like dies yeah. but not like permanently you know yeah i just want yeah, some go angst down. i want some yeah one or, t- yeah one or two to go down yeah because I don't think when was the last time someone apart from obviously like ford being stabbed in the middle of the night has anyone needed to be revivified since then i don't think so but like i I feel like apart from the Oban fight, the corrupted Oban fight, mm-hmm. we haven't had that bigger oh holy shit TPK moment. Yeah. Um, 
because I was re-watching that fight recently and that's where like Marisha's standing up and Laura like leaves the room for a second because Matt's about to roll and like this could be it we could all die here yeah, um, yeah it, it's been a while since we've had um, a proper kind of threat of death I, mm -hmm. uh, I just, wonder they're, rinsed it. they're doing really well do you think that if they come to a head with like the Molly and the gang do you think that could be a potentially like life-threatening fight if it, if it comes to that? Mm, it depends. I think it depends on if they're full power, if mm -hmm. like they wake up after a long rest and then go into the fight, or if they have to slog it through a dungeon for a while. Um, and we also don't really know what the other like. Kree is a blood cleric. We could probably presume uh, assume fairly decent level. Mm -hmm. Molly's got all kinds of creepy crap, but we don't even know what the other characters in his party are so it's true i don't know hmm. i yeah i think it would be obviously a difficult fight i don't think matt's setting it up to be an easy fight yeah um, i'm still no. really interested if they're going to properly fight i don't know because they, they seem to have made the decision that they they want to stop what lucian's doing yes which is like you know that seems like the good choice but it's interesting whether or not like that means stopping him by like stopping him and killing him or if it's like just taking away his avenue to bring the city back how would mm -hmm. he react to that probably not very well but yeah. i think i think it's obvious there will be a fight but i think it could go in a way that it won't sloth hmm. 3183 get out of here with that talk <laughs> saying i kind of want lucian to kill caduceus oh my here. god wouldn't that be Help something me. wouldn't that be something the irony i think talison would leave oh my god <laughs> yeah he'd be he'd like, probably... That's it. i'm not coming back this campaign <laughs> it'd oh, be man. too it'd be too painful oh my gosh wow that's our that's our first <laughs> not coil per, not <laughs> oh, yeah just just for like a little <laughs> bit and then uh and then they'll they'll, they'll bring him back with vivify Oh. <laughs> yeah, I oh, I want yeah. I want Keg to come back. And so just just for like just for like 5 minutes like they they see her in passing and they're like, "Oh, by the way, Molly's alive. Still see ya." Lu yeah. Keg comes back, Lucian has like a terrifying flashback. And it's like oh, it completely yeah. destabilizes him and they're able to get the upper hand. Oh my gosh. <laughs> yep. Yeah, I, I wish I wish Keg would come back just because I love Ashley Birch. Um, yeah. And True. Like, I think she's a great player. <laughs> but yeah. I think oh th what else if if, if they do if they do fight if they do fight Lucian. Yeah. I think all we'll have to do is, you know, just bring a glaive to the fight since clearly that's that's his weakness. That's how he always Yeah. You know. Yeah. <laughs> Anyways, uh what else happened this episode? Um there is the uh oh, Yeah, um uh, oh my goodness! Oh, dry bone soda. I don't know why that was so hard for me to figure out how to say. I was like, dry bone soda. <laughs> anyway, dry bone soda is mentioning the uh, the um, the dagger. Sam that doing Sam hit, has, yeah. yeah hit points. Oh. Sam like uh, Sam keeps using it. Matt keeps saying, "Remember to do this because it affects the hit dice, doesn't it? Like it affects yes. how much he can heal." Yeah, I, mi I missed when he asked, That's interesting. asked him to mark something down, but yeah, I'm, <laughs> I'm worried that <laughs> that Sam's going to like forget that he's been marking all this stuff down, and then Matt's going to be like, by the way, Sam. What level are you at? Yeah, and he's yeah, going to be like, exactly. oh. oh, I'm dead. <laughs> yeah. All of a sudden, you see yeah. Veth is lifeless. Is oh, no. I t you'll be fine. It'll be okay. <laughs> It's setting up for and some nice angst been... down the line. But there's also been no, like, kind of roleplay aspect of it in game, in character yet. I know Laura keeps, like, looking at him saying, like, what? What's going on? Like, whenever Matt mm -hmm. looks at Sam. But I don't think anything's come up. Like, Veth isn't acting any differently um, because of it. Uh, I don't think any of the characters have actually noticed her act strangely or appear different. So... Mm -hmm. It might be a thing that just comes out of nowhere, like, suddenly. 
Because, I mean, at least with Grog in Campaign 1, when he had um, Craven's Edge, it was like they could tell that he was blood frenzy and all that sort of stuff. This is just yeah. going to be, I think, Beth just passes out in the snow because she has no hit dice left. Oh, God. <laughs> it just consumes her. Yeah. Oh, no. Yeah. Yeah. I could, Yay. I could see that. I mean, only, only oh, Sam man. knows. Maybe, maybe he doesn't, doesn't yeah. even know. It's just like at certain thresholds, oh. something happens or something. Yeah. I don't know. Oh dear. No, but I think yeah, Sam is very much a uh, does it for the the interesting story. So I think we're gonna get it eventually. Mm hmm. Yeah. Uh, but then we got, um, after they successfully defeated this creature, they did some scouting around, and they found the body of uh, Zana, Ooh. I believe it was, the annex to uh, Ludinus Deleth. Yeah. Um, so that's kind of... Interesting. Uh, that'll be relevant information to give Ludinus uh, when they do decide to contact the Assembly, if they ever decide to contact the Assembly again, who knows? Right. <laughs> They've got, like... <laughs> They're surrounded by bodies of assembly members. It's like so not yeah. good. It's not We've a got good best look. Best dead in a necklace. Yeah. Oh no. Um. Yeah, no, that's not good. That she's dead. Um. <laughs> but it opens up an annex space for Ludinus Deleth. Crazy oh, theory early do you on. Think... In the show. Are you thinking Caleb? what I'm thinking? Yeah. Yeah. I could see that. Could be. Could be an inn. Could be a way in. Mm. That'd be a whole nother 50 episodes. <laughs> I know. Oh my god. I could see... Oh. Do you imagine him working with the left to like take down Trent, Yeah, that's what I was just but thinking. But then also turning it back on Ludinus and taking him out as well. Oh my god. The coup of the Cerberus Assembly. Let it happen. Please. Mm. Oh. I think also, too, like, because I wasn't on last week's episode, so um, I didn't get to talk about it, but the fact that it's apparently now just a neighborhood of the city that is, like, out there floating, mm -hmm. like, that, the, I'm a lot less concerned. <laughs> it's, like, it's still bad. It still seems yeah. really bad, like, uh, these malevolent sorcerers in this creepy mm. city in the Astral Sea, but for some reason, knowing it's just a part of the city makes me feel a little bit better. And maybe, like, there could still be a story after this arc. Um, yeah. I don't know. It, yeah, I, I feel like it's it's in no way, like, lessened the the um, excitement. But it's just like, ooh, okay, it's not the entire city of Aeor. It's right. just one section of it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Definitely makes me feel a little calmer for some reason. Um, but yeah, yeah no. that, I think that means then we, there could still be more after this arc, because I think mm -hmm. for a while we are theorizing that this is kind of getting endgamey, even yeah. though there's a lot of loose ties and things to clear up. It is, like, it is pretty big, what they're dealing with. Yeah. Yeah, it's, I mean, considering that we're getting imagery of this city consuming things and wanting to absorb knowledge and stuff and enter this hive mind and all these different things... It definitely feels very, like a very much of a world-ending entity, if it was to be brought yeah brought back. Um, yeah. Oh, it's, they definitely need to stop it. Oh and yeah. I kind of hope they don't, so that it can come in and then they can stop it that way, like make it even more tricky. Um, much like again, spoilers for campaign one, but like with Vecna, how they had to stop him before he ascended. Mm -hmm. And then he ascended, and they had to, like, fight him while ascended. Yeah. Um, I thought that was really cool. Yeah. Ooh, so yeah. what if... It's so cool. what if, It's exciting stuff. <laughs> what if a similar thing happen, happens with, like, Molly, where... Well, because he is the Nonagon, right? He is the Nonagon, yep. <laughs> <laughs> as Apparently, far as we know. And so, what yeah, if he is... Him. What if he's maybe not necessarily, like, ascending... But what if at a certain point he becomes like more connected yeah. with the the cognosa? Because isn't it the nonagon is the key? The nonagon is the key to free to unlock, unlock this free. this to Lynn. The, to Lynn. free the unlock somnovan <laughs> under the cognosa. Lynn, what does it say? It's the, <laughs> yeah. 
The Nanagon is like it's like, the thing. King. Yeah, he's the he's like the bridge. He's what's needed to to bring him. <laughs> yeah, we we've, we've got it. In in the jumble of words that we just let out, the the, the correct answer is in yeah. there. It's in there. You just gotta decipher it. He's some kind of key. So yeah. So whether or not he's going to uh, build the bridge or unlock it, like he might be destroyed in the process. We don't know. Um, or maybe he's going to become some kind of like vessel. Wait, was vessel a term in that description as well? The is he a vessel? Yeah. You're looking it up. Please tell me you're looking it up. <laughs> okay. Because what if it's like a, a soul thing, like where. And this leads back to the goddamn love theory that I heard you guys talking about last week. Like, ah, uh, yes. <laughs> like Kiralee was talking, about, like the Luxon is like a, a vessel of souls. Yeah. Yeah. Oh boy. Yeah, we want to like, we want on a roll with that whole thing. With the Luxon being uh, the collector of souls and what <laughs> and what the mages use and all that stuff. Yeah. Yeah. Which is, like, I hadn't really thought about that much. Like, I thought, yeah, the Luxon, I'm sure it's it's just, like, the Riley thing, but there has to be something more to it. The fact that, also, like, we've got Essek now up there yeah. with them. Mm -hmm. And, like, because our, our big, our, our big um, thing about why this yeah. theory could potentially be true is because... We mentioned obviously Vesteragna being the Archmage of Antiquities would take interest mm -hmm. in the Luxon, but it means so much more knowing that she was a part of this cult and wanting to be the mm -hmm. Nanagon and yeah. stuff. And so her wanting to find out more about these Luxon beacons and keeping them for herself would, would make a lot of sense uh, considering her affiliations. Mm. Um, and then same with, same with. Essek, um, why some people think Essek might also be interested in this this city entity um, yeah. is because he also theorizes because he, that there's a connection with these treat, beacons. Yeah. And he treats the Luxon not as like a religious artifact. Mm -hmm. Like he's not religious. Um, he treats it as like this power source or as this magic um, mm -hmm. wondrous item that can't be really explained. So the fact that he's like investigating it more um, to the point where he's working with the Empire to investigate it because he just mm -hmm. wants to know the answer yeah. to it is really exciting. And he was working with Vesterogna as well. Like, yeah. Oh, boy. Yeah. It just, it, it just <laughs> oh, boy. adds so much, so much more, so much to it. That's so cool. I just, I wish, so I wish, excited. I wish we had had a scene with like Essek and Vesterogna to see how Matt like played it out. But we don't have any like point of reference to see how Vesterogna and Essek like actually like interact. Yeah. Um, yeah, and it would also be interesting because if the Mighty Nine were there present for that scene, it would have been like, mm -hmm. well, how do you know each what's going yeah. on? Because I, we don't we don't know, but as far as we know, the Empire don't know that the Mighty Nine know about Essek. That makes yes. sense. Does that follow? Yeah. yeah. So, obviously, the Empire know that Essek is a traitor to the dynasty, but they don't know that the Mighty Nine know that. Um, well, I think, I think, I think Ludinus, Ludinus know knows. Essek was a traitor. Oh, does he? Yeah, because oh, well, remember, <laughs> remember back uh, during the live show when, when the, the traitor, like, he was revealed as the traitor? Ludinus was like, um, I've never seen you so, so soft and vulnerable like this before. And he was like, yeah. They're my friends. Yeah, but I think that was... I think that him just saying, though, like... Um, that was that was more him just saying, like, the Mighty Nine are here in the city. I need to be careful. I don't think at that stage they knew that the Mighty Nine knew because that was when they were mm. finding out um, oh, okay. that it was Essie. Oh, I got so, you now. I got you. Yeah. Um, I did just want to point out, Garth McMurray said, Vess and Essick. Vessick. Vessel. So, oh. you know. And there it is. And there, <laughs> and there it, is. it is. Case closed. <laughs> so we got him. That tickled me. That made me laugh. <sighs> <laughs> um, yeah. Oh boy. Now I now I'm oh, I'm interested in these uh these these other the nullifier and the absorber. Those yeah, things are they're really cool. creepy. 
Are those, um, like, experiments? Creations? Are they... Yeah. So, just also as a as a thing as well, try not to post any kind of uh, wild man or a guide spoilers in chat. Um, this, normally we just say that. Because um, yeah. <laughs> I won't spoil anything about them. But yeah, they're kind of like just uh, Aeorian a- experiments. Um, and... There's three of them in the Wild Mount Guide, so only oh. these two have been introduced so far. But yeah, they've got like unique magical abilities, Ooh. which is pretty cool. That sounds terrifying. Yeah, and like when Matt's saying like they're kind of like moving in the tanks, it's just like ah no, Ugh. don't leave one person in the room with them, sort of. Thing. <laughs> I was getting some like serious. I don't know if you're familiar with um. SCP, Secure yeah. uh, uh, Contain yeah. Protect or whatever. Um, I was getting like a lot of those vibes with these like weird like creatures, like these mm. just esoteric yeah. entities and stuff that are that are yeah. getting out. <laughs> yeah, it's it's <laughs> yeah. No, I love it. I was just thinking like, imagine if they had that. Um... Have you heard of the vending machine one? Or oh, not the vending machine, the coffee machine, SCP. <laughs> it just can make any liquid you want oh, in a cup. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. <laughs> just imagine they walk in and like, you see a strange coffee machine in front of you. <laughs> yeah, oh. sorry. Hmm. just love that one. Um, what is it? Uh, yeah, so they... Back to the episode. They um, yeah. get into that lab, mm-hmm. and it's so like... The fact that they're saying it reminds them of Halas is cool. I really like that. Yeah. Um, but there's just so much room for error in this place, and it's I know unnerving. It's it's a little it's a little terrifying, yeah. um, especially uh, because I mean we've theorized that Halas was probably one of these mages, maybe not necessarily oh, yeah. one of the ones that were in, that were like a part of like the coup yeah. or whatever, but definitely like an Aeorian mage at the very least. Um, so it's good that yeah. they're starting to, you know, draw connections between, ooh, this place kind of feels like Halas's thing. Um, because mm. maybe he, he crafted his, his little happy fun ball, um, to make it feel like yeah. Aeor. So. Yeah. Um, and you gotta wonder too, like, cause the happy fun ball is in, incredible in terms of its, like, magical abilities yeah. was halas the top tier wizard from ao or what if he was just like a regular mage yeah what if he was like Aeor? the janitor um, like <laughs> this is just like how incredible the mages were yeah um but he does talk about like having rivals and clearly he was sabotaged by someone um but it makes you just think like what are these mages like clearly intensely powerful and mm-hmm. terrifying so the thought of their spirits being brought back or whatever is fun. Hmm. Oh, that's right. That's right. That is true. Halas wasn't from Aeor. He was from Zemnios. Oh. He was from the another... That's true. Yeah. Well, all right. Just disregard the past five minutes. (laughs) Mm. Mm. But, I mean, all wizards know each other, so it's possible he, you know... Yeah. Traveled to Aeor, maybe. Uh, (laughs) That's very cool. Um, mm. Man, and we got some... Uh, what was it? Oh, freaking Yasha. Ashley Johnson. This episode was incredible. <laughs> the uh, the message. The message, yeah. Of like her not understanding how message works was perfect. Grabbing her ear. Damn, she's funny. Yeah, I don't know if you can hear me. <laughs> and oh it's gosh. so sweet to her saying like, oh, I don't think you responded because I called you not before. Yeah. Like, that was really sweet. <laughs> mm Oh my um, gosh! Oh, yeah. It was we like, need to we need to protect Ashley Johnson at all costs. Yeah. I was I keep forgetting I keep forgetting that um, this is going off topic real quick, but I keep forgetting that the episodes oh, aren't really? live, um, because yeah. earlier yesterday, um, Laura Bailey won best performance for her role as Abby in The Last of Us Part 2. So I was like, ooh, in the episode tonight, maybe they'll do, like, a little congratulations thing. But I was like, wait, it's not live. Yeah. They'll probably do that, like, next week or something. I don't know. 
Um, yeah. But no, yeah, I forget that too sometimes. Mm-hmm. And I get sad. Like, oh, they already know what's good. They yeah. already they, they already know what's gonna happen. <laughs> We're the ones that are in the dark this time. Yeah. But that's alright. I wonder, because I wonder if we've got narrative telephone next week. Yes. We'll have another episode next week. I, yeah. I would assume that next week's probably going to be the last the last episode for for a while. The year? Um, for a, yeah. yeah, for the year and probably for... A, I'm trying to remember how long they were they went on break last year. I think it was like th- at they, least three weeks. Maybe more. And they didn't have any one-shots last year, did they? Because I know the year before they had... Liam did a one-shot. Or was yes. that last year? I can't remember. Yeah. Time has been really oh, weird. Fuck. Yeah. I can't Wait, quite. no. Yeah. Mm. Hmm. Um. Yeah, I would love an end of year yeah. talks. Yeah. That'd be good. Just a big old like, Zoom call with them all. Yeah. That'd be nice. That'd be really cool. 2018. Oh, God. <laughs> 2018 was the Christmas one shot. Oh, okay. That was the uh, Travis's epic... Um, assassination of Santa, right? Spoilers. Mm, ch- chutney, yeah. Yep. Amazing. <laughs> oh my god. Um, yeah. But anyways, but anyways <coughs> back to the episode. <laughs> <laughs> this is a uh, Critical Role podcast know, where we talk about the episodes. Yeah. Um, we stay on track. We don't yep, skip ahead. We always stay on track. We never skip ahead. We never talk about anything else. Only critical role here in this channel. And everything, everything we say is canon. Yep, everything. Yep. Mm-hmm. Um, just like eventually we're gonna get uh, Vandrin having a cookout, because that's how they're gonna. What if they go through the next chamber and there's an and island. there he is, like, the water chamber, yeah. and there's an island, and that's the island he was talking about. Yep. And Vandrin, I knew it. <sighs> he was an ah. alien this whole time. Oh my God. Um. Can we introduce ourselves? <laughs> uh, if you're referring to us, sure. Hello, <laughs> I'm Nico. I uh, this is uh, this is this is welcome to my welcome to my YouTube channel. Um, to Alana, my this is Alana. Hey, I'm Alana. <laughs> hey. <laughs> we uh, we just we just gush about Critical Role, and uh, we're happy to have everyone here to oh, see, to I freak out with. <laughs> Oh, like, what are we? What are we doing? <laughs> oh, good. Uh, anyways, this is the Critical Role podcast where we talk about anyway, Critical Role. Um, we, just, we just explained. We did it we twice. Know. We just did it twice, <laughs> two times in a row. Anyways, um, but yes. So then they they found the little the little vent thing where they found themselves in like an ar- ar- arboretum sort of thing. A lot of people in Twitch chat yeah. were theorizing that this forest was used for oxygen this was like their way to create oxygen um when they were flying around i guess which could make sense considering uh they seemed uh decayed uh, Mm. not a whole lot of life in them i mean matt said that for caduceus it reminds him of the savalier wood um which which has which brings up a whole bunch of other theories like is a piece of Aeor. Melazomir, like, like, her sort of thing. Like, um, because there was that elf city that was corrupted, which I think is what spread to the Savalier Woods. That's what kind of caused the corruption. So, like, is that where that came from? Like, I don't know. <laughs> it's the fact that it's so similar and the fact that the trees themselves aren't dead and they have, like, an actual because uh, when Jester tried to speak to it, an actual kind of will that is uh, malevolent is awful. <laughs> yeah, It's not cool to think that the corruption of Melazomir and the Savalier Woods came from Aeor, because it seems to pretty much suggest that, Yeah, I think. Mm-hmm. Um, but uh, but what do you, do you think, like, maybe the mages were, like, trying to experiment on things, and they just chose these random locations yeah. to do it? yeah. Maybe, or maybe it was, like, the corruption... I don't want to go spoilers from the book. But maybe, mm. the, maybe like, the corruption of Aeor or the thing that caused it to downfall 
uh, spread as it was mm, breaking apart. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. 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 No, it's not good. <laughs> no, it's not. Oh, Lynn brings up a cool point. Lynn brings up a cool point saying there was corruption at the Blooming Grove and a corrupted creature at the Menagerie, but nothing corrupted at Crap Varad. Except at Crap Varad, on the way there, they had the spooky ghosts. They had, like, the... Ooh. Which weren't necessarily corrupted, but they had, like... Which makes sense. It's kind of like a burial area. But there was ghosts there that seemed trapped. They didn't necessarily seem like... Like happy ghosts they weren't evil or malicious but they were disgruntled they se- seemed like they were yeah they were trapped in the forest um hmm. so that's interesting <laughs> i don't know but but, but yeah i i like yeah. I, I was just gonna uh uh bring caduceus into this um because you know dana g says poor poor caduceus and yeah um, this was like the first time in a while that we've seen him like really like shaken and like unsure mm. of himself. Um, yeah. Which, you know, yeah. we haven't seen before. So it, it cause before it, it felt like his whole view on the corruption stuff, like he just had a goal. He wanted to cleanse his home of this corruption and mm. he didn't seem to like waver a little bit when when yeah. that topic was brought up but now that he's faced with it again um it's definitely and we, affected him and we just got like a kind of really nice moment for him last episode when just a message to his sister and they're like mm-hmm. yeah it's good it's like working and it's like oh you know that's that's good to know like yeah. I, I don't feel as worried now and now he's kind of faced with it again it's like thrown mm-hmm. back in his face of hey this is the corruption that destroyed your home Mm-hmm. Um, and I think I think him making the connection between like it being there, it being where he lived, this place is not good, um, mm-hmm. which I think anyone can come to the idea when creepy baby comes crawling at you. This place is not good. <laughs> um, nope. But um, not at all. But before that, before we had poor Cad, mm-hmm. we had I think one of my favorite moments so far of this campaign. <laughs> Uh, just Je- uh, Bo and Veth oh, walking around yeah. at the bottom of the mm-hmm. forest. I lost it. I I couldn't. No, it was good. <laughs> I, I it was good. together. Just because it was so quick. Marisha's comedic timing of that was perfect. Just like Veth, are you here? You bitch! I know. You're <laughs> I know here. you're here. <laughs> <laughs> it's yep. so good. I think the fact that just calling Veth out, calling her a bitch, was just the funniest thing to me yesterday. <laughs> mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. They they really took a chance going down to this arboretum because this literally could have been yeah. like like a pen for like a massive creature. Uh, I yeah, I think Matt did such a good job of describing how uncertain they or like how unknown it was because yeah. it's some things like like Sam was saying like oh is there soil and he's like do you pick it up and mm-hmm. Sam's like no use mage hand to do it yeah. like. I, I was convinced something was going to come running out between the trees and attack them. But the fact that, no, it's just this dead forest. I think the, the point yeah. of this space was for had to make the connection. But I was spooked the entire time. Um, mm-hmm. And then oof. and then it was even more unnerving than when Jester tried to communicate with the trees. And they just had, like, a hunger yeah. about them where they just wanted, like, them um, and then I th- yeah. and then that immediately immediately made me think of like what if this forest like if they had disturbed it or done something it would have tried like consuming them kind of like in um, uh, Harry Potter and the Goblet of Fire when they're in the maze and the maze was like maze, yeah. like grabbing onto them and like pulling Grab, them grabbing. in and stuff like what if uh, what if the forest yeah. was desperate enough and because also, something like that. R- remind me, um, both Nico and Lynn, um, <laughs> the Sam Woods, when they were going through there and they were, like, looking for the nest, like the Renzo's hideout, they came across dire creatures. Was there a dire bear? But did Matt describe that as, like, a corrupted creature or was it actually, like, a dire creature? Because I, th- I feel like he was, it was, like, a corrupted creature. It might have been. I'm, re- I'm remembering it as just being dire um, but I might have just been taking it at face value, and there might have been 
uh, more to it. Mm. Uh, but I'm not actually sure about yeah. that. Man, huh. chat's talking about hunger being a theme and how that's like mm -hmm. a, a major aspect of Thera's Dune. I know, like, Ooh. like Thera's Dune has and to be woven the, in the, somehow because Matt said that he wanted Thera's Dune and, to be like a big player in this campaign. And like the fact that that um, Aeor was trying to find a way to kill the gods. Yeah, and Thera's Dune whole whole thing is to like infiltrate groups and cult about him like what if he infiltrated this group of mages yeah to make them want to do that and it led to their downfall and oh. there's also what the hell's going on with rudius the red moon i know <laughs> it's oh meant to be God. a weapon of the material gods yeah oh ah. <laughs> it's no moon so I can't, i'm back now i'm back star. to this being a bad thing <laughs> i know it, it, i mean ah. Oh. It is. It's a it's a terrible thing. And it's like I feel like every episode we're getting like some answers to some of the questions we have, but then we just have heaps yeah. heaps more. Because like I mean with with last episode hearing about the message to Caduceus' family and, make, and like hearing that all of that is okay and being like, okay, good, we can not have to worry about that. But now in this episode, now I feel like we do have to worry about it again because it's affecting Caduceus. So maybe there's more to this corruption that he's than he, what he's letting on, or something yeah. else is going to happen. The, mes the message is don't stop worrying. <laughs> I know. It's all bad. I know. Yeah. Can we just ah? To just take us back to Rumble Cusp when things were simple. Just yeah. When people were losing their memories and things were great. <laughs> Yeah. And Caleb was happy for a few seconds. Let's just oh my God. let's just go back to that for for a little bit. And and that was like yeah before before the dinner with Trent, before like yeah yeah oh I I forgot that whole thing happened. I mean I didn't forget that happened, but uh, let's go back to the exact moment Yasha got her wings. Everything was perfect. yes. Can we go back to the maiden flight? The all that stuff, please. That was just. Uh. But speaking of <laughs> so, speaking so. of uh, Caduceus, as we segue into our fan art uh, segment, uh, I selected a Caduceus themed um, piece of fan art as we transition to that. Ba -ba -ba I think there might be like it's a bit. We're gonna. I'm gonna have to wait a second. Ah uh, yes, probably. There's gonna be a bit of a delay. We have this gorgeous fan art by at Heart of, Heart of Pack on Twitter of Caduceus in the middle of, of the forest. I, I love I love the colors of this That's of this picture. Awesome. Like it's it's there's not a whole lot. Um but it just And that's like uh, the new updated outfit. Yeah. Yeah, with his his new new the new what, hair, the is that meant to be is that meant to be from, like, last night's episode? I think so. That's the impression I yeah, got. Yeah, that's quick. Yeah. That's so quick. Yeah. How do they do it? I don't know. But... Yeah, that's awesome. I love the lighting in that one. Mm-hmm. And, and, like, he has such, like, a like a, like a serious, concerned face. Because mm. usually, usually, like, you know, art depicts Caduceus as, you know, more relaxed, casual, um, carefree, but this one... Mm. He's taken on a, very, a much more serious tone, um, so I'm wondering mm. if, in, you know, if for the the next couple episodes, until someone talks with Caduceus and helps him process the things that he's, yeah. he's seen, we might see him take a more of a like a serious serious tone. Oh boy. Perhaps, uh, but yes, yeah, at at Heart of Pack um, on Twitter, uh, you can go check them out. And now we can switch over to uh, transition over to Alana's. Yeah. Um, pick for this so let's do some finagling here uh and i chose an animated thing <laughs> to make Boom. it difficult for nico <laughs> but we got it here we are um and this is from tumblr uh dreaming dreaming in pencil on tumblr mm. um we have two sides of the so same really coin cool. and it's it's a, a molly slash lucian uh mashup which i just is... thought it was really cool because it it like helped me too because for the most part Whenever they talk about Lucian, like, I'm good at calling him Lucian. Mm -hmm. I can do that. 
but I still picture like Molly Mock when they're talking to him or talking about him. Um, yeah. yeah. And I thought, I thought this was really cool to see a really kind of simple Lucian design. Um, Cause now like I can picture Lucian as a completely different character. Um, yeah. Which he is. He is. He's, it's not Molly. It's a mm -hmm. different person completely. Uh, but just just like the detail, like the change yeah. in, in the eyes, the hair, the smile. Yeah. Yeah. The the personality changes in the The face. eyebrows. Like there's so many <laughs> subtle things that change. Yeah, that's that's so well done. I can't I, I I hope I hope we get to see I hope we get to see Molly again. Like I hope I hope some of that. Yeah, peeks like through. a little bit pinks through yeah. or something. Like, like he slips up. That's what I want. Oh. Ooh. Ooh. Could you imagine like they fight Lucian and he's dying like his final words or something and like, oh. like he's uh, like I remember, I remember. Being Molly. Yeah. Yeah. Or or like or like he like specifically like like looks towards Yasha and like hands her back the clover and is just like, I remember. And then he dies. Yeah. Oh. To the writer's room. Yep. <laughs> Sending it to Brian Foster that. right now. Yeah, um, we need that. <laughs> oh We're god, that. there's gonna there's gonna be some fanfics about it. Don't worry, I'm sure. <laughs> oh my goodness. Yes, yeah, no. Danny, that is what I'm worried about. That Lucian still has Molly's memories, and he's gonna use that as like leverage. Yeah. That is what I'm hoping for. <laughs> I feel like I, I like I feel like so that cool. that is the case. Like, it just feels... Yeah. Although, I don't know... I, I think that'd be really cool. I feel like it's, like... It would be super traumatic for Matt to do to his part. <laughs> but yeah, but that... Oh, it's, that stopped him. it's so good. It'd be so it's good. It's so good. Danny G gets the angst is what we want. <laughs> yes. Yes. Um, oh, my goodness. Uh, before... before <laughs> blah, 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 blah. For those of you who don't know, uh, Danny G also has a... Um, uh, a YouTube channel where where she does you know uh, highlights compilations and a bunch of awesome stuff so be sure to check her out as well. Um, but yeah, the angst the angst is growing. Like there's just there's like so much, so many terrible things that are like on the brink of happening, and they're all just like stacking up that like some something's gonna something's gonna give, something's gonna give. Yeah. And I'm worried so at what bad. it's gonna what it's going to be. Um, but now I'm interested in what's going to happen, uh, with Lucian and the gang, because now they've, they've reached another one of these threshold crests. Um, so, mm -hmm. the, you know, Lucian yeah, and co aren't going are to have actively, this one. Very active working against Lucian now. Yeah. Like, I, so I, I, I hope it was kind of a playful, like, Hey, you can come with us. But now they're like, no, we're fucking with your shit. <laughs> right. The party like has to worry. Because I'm sure uh, Lucian is keeping trying to keep tabs on them by scrying, by means of scrying. Mm. Um, so it's possible that they know that the party is here, that they ha they've reached another one of these threshold crests, or at least they're yeah. actively working against them. Um, I feel like the next confrontation with Lucian is not going to be a positive one. No, I think it's going to be... Well, the Mighty Nine are going in with a lot more information now, too. Yeah. Like they've learnt more stuff. That's that's also oh, no. true. Lynn's right. And Lynn, I know, Lynn also. I, I, like, I read it, and then I wished I didn't read it. Because... There's going to be a cliff break, a cliff, a cliff breaker. A cliffhanger. Because, <laughs> because next week break. is pretty much, I would say, guaranteed to be the last one before they go on break. Because then the, this, the following is Christmas, the week of Christmas. Yeah. Um, so it's very safe to say that next week is going to be the last one before they go on like a hiatus of some kind. And no, I don't even want to think about the multitude of potential cliffhangers that the that they could leave that Matt what could if, leave us on. What if they leave someone like dead for the break? Like, oh no! Didn't that didn't that happen? Didn't like Percy? Uh, uh, 
Spoilers. Camping one. Didn't um <laughs> didn't uh Percy like die and they went on like a bit of a break? Like this was their fight with um Ripley, or was it just like a regular? Like he just died at the end of the episode, and then it was the next week. I can't remember. I think. But that one was bad. Again, spoilers. I think that ha- that happened to Vax as well. They like killed Vax. Vax died and then started the next episode. He mm-hmm. was still dead. Um, yeah. Ah. Oh no! I mean, it's happened in this show before. Like it happened with Ford. Oh. Yeah. That was that, yeah. the one with Ford too. Was bad because that was close to being right before the hiatus. Because episode nine yeah. nine when they brought it back, and then they were oh, off for God. months. Like, could you imagine if they had to lock down a week? Before? Oh. <laughs> I don't want to imagine. Oh God. Oh, man. Yeah, I'm worried. I. <laughs> We, we, we keep bringing it up um, how we used to have, like, we used to be able to come up with, you know, a bunch of different tinfoil hat theories and stuff, but now it feels like anything is possible. Anything can um, happen. <laughs> yeah. And now, now like, oh, thinking about God. Lynn's comment about cl- potential cliffhanger next week, there's so many things. It could be, like, a, a Lucian confrontation, like, Geladon could, could make an appearance. Um, because the I previous think... episode, um, Matt pointed out to Sam that he recognizes some of the, the architecture and things that are here and instruments here. He recognizes them because they were from, yeah, from some of them were in Geladon's there. lair. Um, so either, so either while. that means Geladon comes to this area to retrieve things or pieces of Aeor have crash landed around Geladon's lair. Um, mm. Yeah, 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 yeah. I mean, what so else what? is a Sharnai? I mean, they're they're, they're going to like turn around and a Sharnai's there. Probably not. But the turn around the chairs there. Yeah, I think. Cause how okay? So how far ahead is the party um, from Lucian? A good bit. They got. They traveled. Yeah, I think probably at least a day. Um, if that is also where Lucian was going, like... True. They did bring up a good point. He's been here longer than they have. He could have done the other sites already. This is just the one on the way to Aeol Prime, so it makes mm-hmm. sense that this is the last one he needs to go to. So, yeah. who knows? <laughs> and what are they going to do? Are they going to... If they say they successfully collect this threshold press and boogie out of there, um... Are they going to then go to Aeor? Or are they going to go to Essex? I think. I think. I think they. I think they want Essex to come to them, but he's very yeah. much saying like, "No, I can't." Mm-hmm. But is that because he literally can't? He can't leave his post, or is it because he still doesn't really know where he stands with the Mighty Nine, and he's kind mm. of uncertain of how to like deal with them? Because I saw a really good point of that, like how he keeps getting his assistant to message them, like when he could do it, maybe he doesn't talk to Jester because he's feeling feelings i don't know oh i agree i they definitely need they need Essex. yes i think uh what all if of the... dies why would you say something like that why would they bring him in to help and like Essex dies and he's like it's okay i died with my friends like oh. <laughs> he pulls like a like a c3po in uh, Rise of Skywalker. It's like, I'm getting a last look at my friends. Yeah. But I, I think, I think all of the, all of the Essex summoning circles on Twitter and Tumblr are, uh, are going to finally pay off. I think we will definitely have Essex next, uh, next episode. I hope so. And he's going to die. Oh no. <laughs> Sorry, I just love people freaking out in chat. Like, I know. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, we got. Oh gotta, boy. Oh, but but how would he die? Like, are they gonna just like in a, in a random battle with uh with some creatures of of the of the no, area, I, or are they gonna Lucian? Him. Ooh. Or it's yeah. going to be like Lucian targets Caleb or something. And, and then Essex the jumps in the way. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> There's another fanfic. Oh. And then it comes out in canon that he was. a in any way consecuted. <laughs> yeah. 
Oh no. Or Unless or Aeor or is one giant Luxon. <laughs> true. Or or the cliffhanger. The cliffhanger is going to be the reveal that Essek is also trying to become a Nonagon or something, and he's he's known oh, about it this whole time. Even. Essek dies in Caleb's arms. Or Caleb dies in Essek's arms. They both die in Yasha's arms. <laughs> um, yeah. Oh my gosh. I'm... Sorry. I am um, worried. I am so <laughs> for all of that to happen. <laughs> oh my gosh. Ooh. Yeah. Essek reveals his eye tattoos. Caleb dying and Essek participating in a resurrection ritual would be interesting. Oh, yeah, that's true. That's true. But I guess, I guess, yes. You know what I'm my... yeah. We can, we can, we still, can. Still. No, go ahead, go ahead, go ahead. I was going to say, just a little thing. Still my favorite aspect of this whole Nonagon, Lucian, Vesterogna all coming together is the fact that Vesterogna tattooed those eyes on herself. Yeah. <laughs> like, I don't know why. What a nerd. Thinking about that makes me giggle. Poser. What a nerd, pretty much. Yeah. 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 Anyway. That's rough. That's probably one of the roughest theory sessions we've had. <laughs> yeah, I know. Our our angst is a little is a little too high for our own good right now. <laughs> too <strong>. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> um do we have we any do we have any something math? <laughs> <laughs> do we have any any wholesome, happy tinfoil hat theories that'll get us sniped by the CR writing team? Um, well, we don't have the tower. Caleb said that they're sleeping in the dome. The True. Next time. So we. So I'm not sure if we'll get Bo Yasha. Bo Yasha. All right. Until next year. Everyone, we everyone in chat right now. Until next year. Yeah. Oh no! No. Everyone, chat right now. If you have a Twitter, get on Twitter right now. Uh, start start the Bo Yasha summoning circles. Start them. Start them. We gotta get this. We gotta get this going. Our powers need to be combined in order for this to happen. Oh no. Uh, so that's. I mean, it could be fun. They could just sleep in the dome and then skip to the next day. It mm -hmm. might be okay, but I feel like there's gonna be a confrontation, and they're not gonna have the tower again for until next day. Yeah. Day. Oh, it's like. I don't think it's set in yet that next episode is going to be the last one of the year and probably for, you know, a few weeks. It, it won't yeah. set in until that episode is airing and, like, we're in the shit and, like, there's, like, 30 minutes left of the episode and they're, they're like, in the middle of, like, a climactic point and it's like, oh, no. Oh, no, the episode's going to end or soon. Or worse, or worse, the episode, like, three and a half hours in and they're just chatting, having a great time, walking through the snow, yeah. and we'll just be like what's gonna happen so i know gonna yeah happen. like yeah like, like everything is fine but in the back of our heads it's like okay things are too fine right now and then he's gonna pull like uh remember remember spoilers campaign one remember in campaign one when the party were, were just like chilling and then all of a sudden like vecna is just like in the doorway like talking to them like what if he pulls something yeah. like that like 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 lorenzo comes back or something <laughs> I like how our theory for next episode is just like we're going to be miserable no matter what. I know. No matter what happens, we are going to be miserable next episode. We're not. We are not having a good time next episode. <laughs> yeah. Unless Bo Yasha happens. Unless and yes, forgiven. then Essek can die. You know, that's that's fine. Yeah, it's fine. <laughs> then everyone can. Die. Yeah. As long as we get the kiss before everyone dies, that that yeah. alone will provide us with enough like emotional comfort to get through the trauma of, of yeah. whatever terrible thing is definitely going to happen. I li I like how I I like how we can't even come up with like a like a solid like tinfoil hat like traumatic thing that's going to happen next episode because there's there's like too many things that could potentially happen. Too many things that could go wrong. That it's not even it's not even worth trying to come up with with a concrete idea. Oh. Yeah. I don't know. <laughs> I'm so excited. <laughs> I'm excited too. I'm excited too. But I am 
equally terrified. But again, it's like it's like it's the good. It's that good angst. It's that good shit. That that, oh, that I've been yeah, waiting for. The, it's the like it's gonna be terrible. Like I yes. need it. <laughs> yes, it's gonna be terrible. But it's gonna be it's it's gonna hurt so good. Is is what it's exquisite what it's agony. Be. Yeah. If any of them die, so will I. We are too late in the game for any of that nonsense. Also true. Also true. Like, a permanent death at this point would be devastating. Um, and I, I'm, yeah. I'm not necessarily calling for a permanent death, but, you know, I'll never say no to a, uh, a heart-wrenching uh, resurrection ritual. Definitely not. Yeah. He does resurrection rituals. Yeah. Or, like, uh... Or, like, uh... Uh, a Sam Regal s character walking out of the campaign yeah. and a new one appear in a while. Yeah. <laughs> although, although I feel like it's um the the two like <sighs> when that happened in campaign one, box mark in a position to kind of spread out a bit, like and have a new character come in. Mighty Nine are in the shit. Like mm-hmm. if someone leaves now, they're, they're screwed. Yeah. <laughs> they oh yeah. Lynn, don't don't even start with me, Lynn. My heart can't take it another back. Yeah, no, oh yeah. my god, who do you think? Who do you think would be the most likely character to 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 do that? Jester. To to what like to to, to like like to 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 like sell their soul away to save someone else, like a life for a life. I think it would be Ford. Jester. Ford. Ford. Ooh. I think Jester would, but I think Ford would would try to stop her and do it instead. Ah. Uh... Oh god! I've also thought a lot about like which character would be the worst to die for the morale of the Mighty Nine, and I think it would also be Ford. Um, mm. I think like Jester would be heartbreaking, but like I think Ford is a bit of the the heart of the group without them all realizing it. Um, yeah. Yeah. Oh. <sighs> <laughs> Welcome to the Watch Welcome, yep. <laughs> Where we compose ourselves in a professional and um, unbiased manner. Yep. Yeah, it's good. How are we feeling, everyone? How how is ever, how are you all feeling about about next week's episode? The last yes. How is everyone feeling about next next episode? Oh, yeah. Probably being the last of the new year. Or of the, of the year, into the into the new year. <sighs> I feel like make the great sacrifice of the whole team. Think of think of like how far ahead in the story we would be if we never had the hiatus. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We'd be way into it. We'd be. We'd be like what, like four, eight, eight twelve, up. like we'd be at least like. 15 episodes ahead yeah at least ish because that's like three months ish and they may have taken you know off weeks and stuff here and there oh boy also also we're completely no yeah i think there will be another episode yeah i was gonna say we're kind of still theorizing that there's going to be another episode i think they would have announced this week if there wasn't another episode so Yo, oh yeah we are, we are oh yeah safe yeah 100 percent um man, yo i just got in the stream what are y'all doing we are um trying not to cry freaking out <laughs> yeah we are uh talking about um next week's episode being the last one of of the year and what that means for our and souls Matt's gonna fuck us with a cliffhanger. yeah it's not gonna be fun uh but i guess is there anything we missed is there any other things we want to bring up about about this episode any other concerns hopes dreams questions uh do, do i have anything else written down i don't think so i think we pretty much talked about everything that i wanted to it was yeah i, I like these episodes where it's like majority combat and um a little bit like yeah it was mainly it was mainly combat for the most part um and then because it makes it easier for us to discuss, but also then get off track. True. <laughs> but, Big um, true. Yeah. I don't know. It's my my dog's on my bed, and I'm wondering if he's poking into frame there. <laughs> oh no, I don't. I don't see him, but I wish. Like tiny I wish little, I did. A tiny little speck. 
Is it gonna? How do I point with my? Phone? Oh, I kind of see it. Right. I kind of see it. I don't think. Right I don't think stream there. would be able to see it. <laughs> Dang. He's not gonna be happy, but I can. <laughs> <laughs> He's not happy with me right now. Anyway. Oh. <laughs> Anyways, this is a critical role podcast where we're talking about critical role. Um. Mm -hmm. Thoughts on Halas knowing a lot of lore. Yeah, I think he's not talking to them. Yeah, he's not he won't. Talk to them. He won't <laughs> say like, a goddamn thing. Um, but it would be interesting. Maybe should they? T I think they need to talk with Yusa again. Did they let Yusa yeah, know about this? Me. This thing? I think they did, or did they not? About the city. Yeah. About the city. I think. Yes. They did yes, because they immediately the went. Fight. Yes, because they went to. Uh, they haven't mentioned him like cognosum and somnova like he doesn't have true that yes that's also true but the fact that the the, uh, the cobalt soul have some information on it is encouraging yes um maybe yeah it could be awful oh, boy. oh i'm worried but i mean i guess if that's oh boy if that's all we so if that's all that's all we've got then like the only it. thing the <laughs> only thing we can do is wait and hope for the best and hope that Matt doesn't <laughs> screw us over too hard going into yeah. the new year. Oh, uh, but at the same time I want him. Matt yeah. Matt give us your worst. Matt, give it. Hurt us, Matt. Hurt us. I want you to rip my heart out. Please. Let me feel it. Oh. Yeah. <sighs> oh boy. So, I guess with all that being said, anyway. we can go ahead and wrap up. As always, thank you all. So, uh, are you planning uh, what the sheet next week? Uh, yes, we will. We will, we will, we will be doing it. We will be doing it. Hopefully, we won't be crying and all of that stuff uh but at the same time hey i mean like crying live on air <laughs> you know it could happen we were right. i know <laughs> I just... <laughs> why were we right everyone like yelling at us oh no yeah. but yes yes we will we will be live we will be live on youtube um again we are doing away with with twitch um, I feel like the transition from Twitch to YouTube was, was pretty good. Um, so yes, big thank you to everyone who joined us, everyone who was from the Twitch audience, uh, joining us here again today. Uh, thank you for accompanying us on this transition and thank you all, uh, new faces and new chatters for joining us today. Um, my big, uh, reason for wanting to make this transition was to, um, widen the audience um for this for this uh for this podcast and i know my youtube community um is much larger than my community on twitch um and so i wanted to have a little bit more of um uh what's the word the word is something i wanted to connect with you all a bit more um and be able to converse about critical role a bit more uh and so th th that was like my main reason for wanting to do this transition so again getting sidetracked thank you all so much for joining us uh today uh hopefully next week goes smoothly but we all know matt's gonna throw us a curveball so be sure to join us for that next week um thank you to everyone who's going to be watching this on spotify or in the podcast form after this airs thank you all so much for for watching there and supporting us uh once again be sure to uh, check out at Hit Dice Heroes on Twitter and on Twitch for updates for our uh, one shot that's going to be coming up next weekend. Correct? Yes, next weekend. Yes. And it's not on not on our Twitch channel, but it'll be on the Level Up Dice Twitch yes, channel. Yes, yes, it'll be on the. Find all the details for it on our Twitter. Yes. So yeah. Um, so be sure to out. check all of that out. It's going to be such a wonderful time, just in time for the holidays. Um, <laughs> So yeah, I guess I guess that's gonna do it for us here. Uh, thank you all again so much for joining. This is this has been awesome. Um, stay safe. Uh, we love you all so very much, and we will see you all next week. Bye everyone. <laughs>